Airplanes are beautiful creatures. They can take bunches and bunches of people and transport them all the way around the world. But have you ever stopped to consider who created airplanes? Well, look no further than the tale of the AEA and the Silver Dart. This video is going to have to be told in three different parts. Story, impact, and legacy. So let's start with the story. Alexander Graham Bell, inventor of the telephone and teacher of the deaf, created the Aerial Experiment Association with his wife Mabel on October 1st of 1907. This team consisted of John A. Douglas McCurdy and Frederick W. Baldwin, two very skilled engineers taught right here in the University of Toronto. Thomas Selfridge, a retired military observer, studying aviation, and Glenn Curtis, an engine manufacturer. This blend of skills and personalities fueled the most productive team of aviation pioneers ever. After the team was created, they started with kites. On December 6th of 1907, they conducted the first flight of the Cygnet 1. It was a large cathedral kite placed on pontoons. Selfridge drove a steamboat which piloted the Cygnet 1. He piloted it on the Brass to Ore Lake and reached a height of 51 meters. It stayed in the air for seven minutes before the tow line broke, leading the kite and Selfridge to submerge in the water. Selfridge was saved, but the kite was not. In the winter, the team relocated to Hammondsport, New York, which was close to Curtis's engine factory. The members built and flew a series of planes powered by Curtis's engines. The Red Wing, the White Wing, the June Bug, and the ever more famous Silver Dart. The Red Wing flew 319 feet, the White Wing flew 279 feet, the June Bug was the first plane in history to fly one kilometer, and introduced the team to ailerons and dope fabric wings, which led to longer flights, and it won Glenn Curtis the Scientific American Cup. They incorporated all of the changes like the dope fabric wings and the rubberized silk balloon claw into their newest plane, the Silver Dart. It flew 4.5 miles with McCurdy piloting it over the ice of Hammondsport. With all those changes, the Silver Dart was dismantled and sent to Bell's estate. On February 23, 1909, the Silver Dart became the world's first aircraft to fly in the air of Canada. The Silver Dart flew more than 200 times before being damaged beyond repair, landing in Petawawa during military trials in early August of 1909. The engine was later retrieved and restored and is now on display at the National Museum of, Ty of Science and Technology in Ottawa. But sadly, during an accident unrelated to Bell's experiments, Thomas Selfridge died in a flight demonstration for the U.S. Army. Eager to start building aircrafts, Curtis met and became good friends with Augustus M. Herring, and left the AEA to start his own company. Without Curtis and his engines, the other members of the group saw little point in continuing. The AEA officially terminated on March 31st of 1909. With the AEA gone, Baldwin and McCurdy created the Canadian Aerodrome Company. With Bell providing financial support and guidance, Baldwin and McCurdy conducted lots of lots of research on things such as ground speeds and engine performance charts. They obtained patents to the Silver Dart and made many modifications resulting in the Signet 1. Batik number 1. It was the first aircraft to be made and built in Canada. They also produced the Batik number 2 and the Hubbard monoplane. After all the success of the Silver Dart, the CAC split up on March 11th of 1911. After all of that, let's see where our group members ended up. Bell and Baldwin let go of working in the sky. By 1912, they were focusing on development of hydrofoils that could travel on water. Their first watercraft, the HD-1, reached a speed of 45 miles per hour on, in July 1912. Bell's last achievement was the HD-4, which, with support from the Canadian and American navies, set a world marine speed record on September 9th of 1919 of 70.86 miles per hour which would stand for 10 years, but by the same year, Bell was suffering from life-threatening diabetes, a dangerous condition that perhaps influenced his decision to not fly or ride in hydrofoils. McCurdy went on to give flight demonstrations to huge crowds in the United States. Americans were so taken by his courage and they declared he was, in aviation, a true American. Curtis was gradually eased out of the corporate leadership and management for the automobile industry, and he eventually left. In the 1920s, Curtis sold a large portion of his engines and invested in a large amount of land in Florida and turned his attention to the design of house trailers. Alright, now let's talk about the impact. The Silver Dart made a bigger impact in the flight industry than most people might think. For one, 
The team who constructed it was in a competition for flight with the Wright brothers. Although the Wright brothers had the upper hand with flying their plane first, the Kitty Hawk. But the Kitty Hawk flying 852 feet, 0.16 miles, everyone was looking to Bell and his team to top that. But the Silver Dart's record-breaking 4.5 mile flight, 23,760 feet, the presence of flight was now known to the world. With the Wright brothers defeated, the AEA got, con got contacted by the military to use their plane in the World Wars. This was huge for the AEA to have this opportunity. Companies like the Air Board got, the got their idea of flight and aviation from the Silver Dart. Even now, avi aviation has such an important role in long-distance travel. Without the Silver Dart and the AEA, aviation wouldn't be as nearly as good as it is today. And last but not least, let's talk about the legacy. With the Silver Dart being such a staple in the Canadian history books, the model of the thing is now sitting in the Canadian Aviation and Space Museum, which is in Ottawa. The engine has also been stored there as well. Although it is just a model, it is the oldest airplane in any kind of museum.